Hey guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look at my Zcom Twin, which is my most recent build and probably new favourite plane. I've already done a build video on a Zcon and this is so similar I'm not going to cover it again, but I'll put a link in the video description to that video. In this video we'll take a quick look at the differences between the single and twin motor versions of this wing. We're going to take a look at my setup and the parts I've used. There will be a full parts list in the video description with links. And finally we'll move on to some footage from the Maiden. Okay, so we'll quickly cover the difference between the single and twin motor versions of this wing. Uh, the first obvious one is the twin has two motor mounts and because it has two motors the vertical stabilizers are a good bit further apart but they're also quite a bit bigger than on the single motor. With those being further apart it means that the elevons are then shorter and the winglets there on the wingtip are quite a bit smaller than the single motor version. The spar pattern is slightly different and I think there are a few more of them in the twin. The wall separating the two electronics bays used to be made of corex but now it's made of foam and I think those lids are a little bit larger on the bays on the twin. Then the wingspan stays the same, that is 56 inches, which is around 1.4 meters. Let's move on to the setup of this new wing. The first thing is the overall appearance. I went for this red and black theme to match the badass motors. The black area is an automotive wrap and the elevons are painted red and then laminated. The build process is slightly different when you're wrapping a plane rather than painting it. So when I painted the orange Zcon, I went with 3M90, then paint, then laminate. Whereas with wrapping the wing, you go with 3M90, then laminate, then vinyl wrap. I really don't enjoy applying the vinyl wrap, but I'm very happy with how it looks when it was done. The total weight it added to this build was around 160 grams. For the battery in this one, I'm using the same as I was in the single motor Zcon, and that is two of the 4000 milliamp hour 5S LiPos, and they're running in parallel to give me a total of 8000 milliamp hours. My usual flight time is around 20 to 25 minutes with a lot of fast flying. Uh, I did try an endurance flight once with the single motor version, and I was in the air for one hour and 15 minutes. For the motors on this one, I'm running two badass 2310 1680 kV, both with 6x4 APC props. Originally, I had picked out some 2315 1800 kV motors, but after a discussion with the guys at Badass about the best setup for this wing, taking into account its all up weight and also the fact that I was going to remove the Osmo action from the nose, which would remove a lot of weight from the nose. They suggested that maybe the 2315s might be a bit overpowered and also add a lot of unnecessary tail weight. So in the end, I went with their suggestion of the 2310s, which worked out well for the CG. And yeah, they have plenty of power, so I'm happy with the choice. The recommended ESCs for this setup is 45 amp. So I decided to go with two of these Little B Cloud Phoenix 50 amp ESCs, which are BL Heli 32. I like the idea of using a quad ESC because without the unnecessary beck on board, you save some weight and some space. But I am cautious of the fact that the amp rating is based on the fact that it's going to be strapped to the arm of a quad and getting really good airflow. So what I decided to do was remove the standard aluminium heatsink, which is tiny, and replace it with something a bit more heavy duty. I also decided that I would expose the heatsinks to direct airflow. And we'll cover that a bit later when we look at the design of the electronics bay. When I was trying to fit these electronics in the bay, I noticed in the bottom there, there was a tiny little speck of something. So I fished it out with my tweezers and realized it was a capacitor from one of the ESCs. And I managed to find the spot where it came from. I can't believe I even saw this in the first place. That's miracle number one. It was extremely fiddly and I don't know how I did it, but I managed to solder it back onto the ESC. That's miracle number two. For me, one of the more significant changes in the build compared to my previous Zcon is the fact that I decided to go with digital video. And I'm doing that using the new DJI O3 transmitter. And for those of you that don't know much about this, it basically is an improved version of the previous Vista, but it also has an onboard recording which is in 4K and it has built in rock steady stabilization. This meant I no longer have the need for the Osmo action to be mounted on the nose. Uh, which offers a good weight saving and also keeps the wing really nice and aerodynamic because the action camera is a bit of a brick on such a thin wing. The standard antenna that comes with the O3 is a bit bulky and apparently it doesn't perform too well. 
It's also a dual band antenna and I don't need to be using the 2.4 gigahertz band. So I bought two 5.8 TrueRC Singularities. They're really nice and small and light. To house the O3 transmitter, camera and antennas, I designed this nose in Fusion 360, which is obviously designed to replace a foam part that's cut out. It matches the profile of the wing perfectly, so it's a really nice fit. The transmitter itself is known for getting quite hot, so I did make sure there was some space around the edge for that, just to let the air into the cooling vents on the side, and I also added a small intake on the front of the mount. Then finally, on the back there, there is two holes for the antennas, which hold them at a roughly 45 degree angle. The nose is printed in TPU which is a flexible material and this offers some protection to the electronics inside it but it also means it's a lot less likely to smash or crack if you hit anything hard on a landing. I will put links to all of the 3D printed parts that went on this plane in the video description below. For the servers on this one I'm using the same as I use on my mini drac and on the previous Zcon and that is the Hitech HS225MG which are Metal Gear servos. They're always really reliable, lightweight and strong. To link these to the Elevons, I'm using the right wing bulletproof rods and horn set. On the back of the wing, I've mounted four of the Menace RC Cobb LEDs. These things are super bright and they come with their own dedicated driver. And that is wired up as per the diagram shown on the screen right now. The flight controller I'm using on this one is a Matek H743 wing light, and that's running iNav6. This diagram here shows how I've got everything wired up. I quite like taking a screenshot of the Matek wiring diagram and then annotating it. I find this really useful to refer back to when I'm setting up the iNav config or if I just come back to reconfiguring a wing after maybe a couple of years. As you can see I've got the O3 air unit connected to the VSW power pins on the flight controller and this just allows me to use a switch on the transmitter to now turn on and off the power to the O3 air unit remotely. So now by default I have it so that when I plug the battery in in the field the O3 air unit is not on and I can just let it sit there getting satellites, get myself ready to fly before I flick the switch and turn on power to the transmitter. This just saves any unnecessary overheating. For the electronics bay I designed this part to hold all the electronics in place. That would be the two ESCs, the flight controller and the LED driver. The main reason for this was I wanted the ESCs to be held at exactly the right angle and height so that the heat sinks would poke just out the top of the Corex lid once the holes cut out for them. I also thought it looked quite smart and kept everything fairly tidy. For the control on this one I'm using a Crossfire Nano receiver and that's connected to a ProDrone dipole tuned to 868 MHz. You can see it sticking out just to the side of the right vertical stabilizer. The all up weight on this one is 2266 grams which is a bit lighter than my previous Zcon at around 2400. I'm not too sure what the CG measurement is from the point of the original nose, but I do know that it's running the CG about one centimeter back from my original Zcon. When I work out what it is, I'll put it in the video description. So that's the setup overview on this one. If I have missed anything, please let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Before we move on to footage from the maiden day, I thought I'd share a bit of a mistake I made on that day. I thought I had this clever system in place where if I'm working on the bench with my transmitter and I set the Crossfire TX to a 25 milliwatt max power, I put a piece of tape around the 2.4 antenna just to act as a reminder when I get to the field that I need to increase the power output. I'd normally use masking tape because it's really easy to rip off, but this time I couldn't find it so I actually put some electric tape around it. Now, when I got my transmitter out in the field, I saw that and thought, that's going to be pretty hard to rip off, actually. So I went to do that first, and rather than ripping the tape off, I actually pulled my entire 2.4 antenna out of my transmitter. So I was a bit annoyed with that, and at that point then forgot to increase the transmitter power. So I went ahead with the flight, and not only did I go ahead with the flight on 25 milliwatt, I also forgot to twist my antenna on my transmitter so that the antenna was vertical to match how it was on the wing. I didn't realize any of this until about halfway through the second flight. I was about four and a half kilometers from home, about two meters above the ground, and I got the telemetry loss call out, which I don't normally hear. At that point, I noticed the antenna, turned it the right way, and from then on, I had no issues. But I'm quite impressed that I flew for so long with the antenna the wrong way at 25 milliwatts and didn't have any issues at all. So this is the first launch of this wing. 
I did use iNav Auto Launch and I'll share the settings in the video description below. You'll notice that in the first launch it runs quite close to the ground for a couple of seconds, but in the second launch, which I'll show straight afterwards, after it's been tuned, you'll see the difference. Okay, that's enough talking from me. I hope the video is useful. Thank you for watching and enjoy the maiden. It's not my problem It's not my